Hey folks, Evil Pajamas back here with our Civilization 6 playthrough of our crowded Terra map on Deity Set. It. If you recall, we are playing with the max number of AIs. That is 9 AIs on a Terra map. So we closed out our second segment after initiating a war with Gilgamesh, and we are fighting to see who is going to get early control of that Pontinal Natural Wonder area. So we had initially focused on a uh, bad Tiberia there, but he had walled up that city and then for some reason dropped the city just on the southwest coastline, which is now undefended and uh, unwalled. So you can see I have five units down there. Um, a lot of them are pretty beat up, but he doesn't actually have any defenses down there. Now, you can also see that in my second city that I am building a Spearman currently. Now, Spearmen don't get a bonus against war cards, and I'm usually not a huge fan of making early Spearmen melee units. But if you are in a war, I would recommend maybe trying to get one Spearman out. And that is simply to get the boost that is later on down the science tree for, uh, I, I can't recall what it's called now. No, that's right. Uh, military tactics. It's the one with the little little chess piece face. And the reason I do this is not because I find that boost to be like extremely valuable. I just find it to be out of position on the tech tree in terms of that you already have stronger units to use by the time you are reaching that tech to work on it. So it's not super convenient to build a Spearman at that point in the game. Now, I'm aware that I built a second Spearman after saying I don't like Spearmen, but that is simply because, one, I find it a little bit difficult sometimes to get a kill with the Spearman, and two, I need melee units in order to actually take the city, and all I have is my Vampire and a Warrior. Here I take the internal trade route, which provides food and production. I tend to favor those early, but... Because I'm in a war, we have to remember that this is a riskier path down to the southwest. Uh, the north would obviously be the safer path from getting pillaged by Gilgamesh, so a little bit of a gamble there. Now because I have the Siege of Eridu pretty much under control here, I'm going to bring a unit over to scout in the vicinity of Gilgamesh's empire towards the west. If you can free up a unit to wander around a little bit inside your opposing uh, civilization's empire, I'd recommend doing so for a couple of reasons. One, it can confuse the AI and tends to maybe sometimes distract some of their units to go after you, uh, pulling them away from the main confrontation. Two, it gives you an opportunity to look for what types of reinforcements they might be building, and three, it looks for opportunities to pillage away from the main battle. And pillaging is very important during war because it is one of the ways that you can sustain not building as much infrastructure. If you are interested in how little infrastructure you can get away with building in a war, I did do a video on that. I think it's called Early Surprise War by AI. Um, it's about an hour-long video um, sort of showing how you can get away with building sort of minimal military and defending. Because I have the advantage here in the number of units, and we are still waiting on engineering to get catapults, we take an opportunity to start building a campus in the capital, because we can sort of tell by the number of turns that engineering is taking to research that that lack of science production is really hurting us um, in terms of keeping up on the science curve. We have a little skirmish along that riverbank here between Aridu and Uruk. And you might be wondering why I opt to divide my damage between the two units rather than just killing that archer. This has to do with how the AI tends to play very damaged units. Although I could have killed the archer, I would have left a full full HP war cart, which would have likely killed my slinger, which it still will likely kill my slinger. But the difference here is, is that the AI will likely retreat that archer, and the um, 
war cart will then be left with enough HP, I'm thinking that the archer will probably be able to pick it off. Now, I have mentioned before about how the AI makes some really bonehead plays, and this is a good example here. There's, like, zero reason for that settler to be one tile to the east of that city. I have no idea why they have it there. I mean, I, I guess I, I can't presume what they see in their fog of war since they don't have any units out there, but I don't really see where they think they would be going with that settler. So, um, free settler for me. Hooray. Now you can see the little skirmish to the west is still going on, and I was a little bit off on my prediction of how the AI would retreat. They didn't retreat the archer, instead they retreated the war cart, but then they brought their other war cart in from that Tiberia. So there, there was some retreating as I anticipated, just not the unit that I thought that they would retreat. So if you could find a good choke point to post up prior to the time that the AI gets crossbowmen, you tend to be at a pretty good advantage versus the AI. The AI has a tendency to just, uh, I don't know, walk their guys into your archers, uh, and you can get a lot of free attrition on their army. It's a bit like they are programmed like this old Super Nintendo game here. Um, of these supposed lemmings. I'm not sure why the, the artist for this box thinks that a lemming looks like some kind of cross between a Phineas and Ferb character and a Muppet baby. So I decline an offer from Chandragupta here because I generally think that iron is more valuable than horses early in the game. And then I go ahead and accept this Diplo favor trade from Coop. And the reason that we're doing that, although this has come back to bite me in the ass sometimes, but generally you don't have enough diplomatic favor to allocate a lot of votes to anything early on in, like in the first diplomatic um, voting session. So I think that it's generally a good trade if a AI is offering you uh, gold for your diplo favor. So I do a whole lot of vacillating back and forth here about what I am going to build in that second city. And uh, I, I can't really decide. I know that I have enough of a military advantage here that all I really want is catapults. So, I, you know, I'm thinking pretty heavily on building another campus, but eventually I land on uh, going with a builder. And the reason for that is I have a five population currently in that city but I only have four tiles that I know that I am working that are in the state where they aren't really going to be improved and that's the two pond null tiles, the pasture, and the uh, improved iron source. So I have an additional uh, uh, luxury resource down to the south that I could improve or to the north or I could improve uh, any of the hills with an additional mine. So that's the reason why I eventually land on filter. So I don't really have an ideal spot to use that settler that I stole from Gilgamesh because I don't have any way to cross the ocean water right now and I'm pinned down into this uh, corner of this continent here. So what we eventually end up having to really do is walk down to a less than ideal spot down on the tundra on the, the far south end of the map here. But there is some advantages to that because I can settle it in an area where I am immediately able to get two uh, sea resources improved, which will uh, give me the boost that I believe that I don't have for harbors yet. Now, the reason that I am taking a peek at the policy screen here is because Ideally, what you'd like to do is you'd like to slot the 30% card bonus to harbors and encampments at the same time that you build multiple of these districts. So I have two cities where I would, or potentially three cities, where I would want to build a harbor. And then I also have an encampment district that does not yet have its barracks built. So optimally, what you would like to do is find a time 
where you can sort of sync up the production and slot that card in and get that 30% across all of your cities at once. So here we're going to have a series of turns with Gilgamesh running his war cards into die and then periodically trying to negotiate peace. Um, which incidentally today is the day that we get the uh, stop asking me button, which is sort of cool. Since we're going to be finishing up engineering here, we're going to be looking for an opportunity to build catapults. And because we then want to set up to siege on Bad Tiberia, we want to take our archers off to that choke point and reposition them so that we are ready to take down uh, Bad Tiberia as soon as we have catapults ready. Now, the AI is smart enough that they will prioritize your siege unit first when attacking back with their walls or defensive units when you are sieging a city. So because of this, you're going to need probably at least one, um, you know, sacrificial kind of unit or, well, I, what I typically do is I send in to range um, a wave of units first before I move my catapult into range and sort of set up a, a defense barrier on my catapult because it could typically absorb at least one wall hit, but you have to be careful if they actually have a crossbowman garrison, it is possible for them to one-shot your catapult with the crossbowman and the wall. So in, in that case, you're going to need multiple catapults, really, if you're going to want to get hit. So as you are getting ready for battle and you're in sort of the pre-battle um, preparation, you're going to want to examine what policies you have in place, what governance you have in place, and that kind of thing, because it might be easy to get distracted from that once you um, are sort of wrapped up in that. And I know I'm already in a war, but I, I guess I'm talking, referring here to specifically sieging the city here before I initiate that. So as we move into the medieval era, we are unfortunately going to lose that extra 10 combat bonus because Gilgamesh has been pushed into the Dark Ages by our um, relentless assault here. But I think since we are pushing into the medieval era, um, this would be a good time to wrap up, even though the, the video is a little bit shorter than our last playthrough video. It's a nice, clean spot for us to conclude. So hope everyone enjoyed this video and hopefully we will be continuing on with the next part. Uh, today is patch day so we should have some updates to the ley lines and um, some other balancing changes around policy cards. So again everybody have a great December 2020 and the close of their year and thanks again so much for watching and um, consider liking and subscribing if you like this content. All right take care everyone.